How you doing? This is Coach G from Code 31 Media TV Podcast. We live at Street Media, and I got very special guests with me. I want to thank everybody that came out tonight in this rainy, rainy weather for our podcast. But I got special guests. Introduce yourselves. Hey, I'm Nisi. I'm Keith Cowboy's sister from Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Five. <laughs> Ray, the real Lisa Ray, Queens in the house. You already know, Southside's in the building. <laughs> How you doing? I'm Kamel Ellis, One World Fest Global. Yeah. Yeah. Two more letters and we're going to be family. All right. <laughs> For sure. Okay, but we're going to start off with Nisi. Yes, we are. We are family. Introduce yourself. Let them know a little bit about yourself. Okay, well, I'm Janice Wiggins, known as Nisi. Um, I am Keith Cowboy's um, sister from the Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Five. So we've been, that has been my rock from a long time. Him and I grew up real close together. So this podcast is mainly about him and his legacy and his pioneer that hip-hop culture will never die. Yes. So just take us back to the beginning of, you know, how he got established in the business doing music. Like, when did he know... This is the, what he wanted to do. And then how did he meet Melly Mel and everybody from the Furious Five? So again, back then, back in high school, junior high school, you know, he used to just bang on the desks and bang on the furniture and asking me, how does this beat sound? How does this sound? And stuff like that. So moving forward, he was supposed to be going to school. He never went to school. He always been down in the South Bronx with the group, mm-hmm. with, well, with his crew, meaning not the, famous, the Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Five. Mm-hmm. So... Um, he met Flash. Okay. He met Flash just on a social tip. Okay. So Flash was in park, in the park, 63 park, and Flash would just lay the mic down, open mic, mm-hmm. and just ask anybody to feel free. Anybody want to freestyle? So my brother Keith Cowboy was the first one that grabbed the mic and was the crowd pleaser of Grandmaster Flash and the Furious okay. Five. Make the jump for joy, things like that. Okay. My brother and I had a friend, Billy, and he was going into the Army. And I'm about to tell you how the hip-hop culture started. Because yes. in the Army, of course, you know the lieutenants or whoever you call in the Army is going to start you off with hip-hop, hip-hip-hop, hop a hip hop So my brother took it and ran with it. And who's to say that today that hip-hop brought this pioneer, this legend, to where he is now? Definitely, I, when I Googled it, it said that he's been in Absolutely, absolutely. And I just want to say, he has five children. He have Delia, Quincia. He have two kids, Robert, the males, and Quan. You know, and, and I'm proud of them. They're proud of their father. I miss my brother. Yes, yes. So, tell me how it feels 50 years later, the, the, the anniversary of hip-hop. And the significance that your brother played in history. Well, he, I know he played this part. You see what I'm saying? Like, for me, I was on social media just Janice Wiggins. Little Janice Wiggins. And this 50 years of hip-hop, decade, 50 years anniversary, now I'm big. Just because of Keith Cowboy. Mm-hmm. And who's to see, say, they don't, I don't know where I'm going after this. Right. I'm going to follow his legacy. Right. Follow it. He's never going to be forgotten. Right. So tell me, like, um, with the songs from the, the Furious Five, Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Five, like, did he write a lot of the stuff? My brother was not a writer. He would take nursery rhymes and just just things randomly. He, You know, he, he would write stuff. He used all my toilet paper, all my paper towels, and, and still don't read off what he wrote. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? Then he'll just... Just go off of anything. Off a light can be a rhyme for him. Mm-hmm. You see the hip hop. Just by my friend going into the army. Just things like that. He was never a writer. You know, so that's what brought him to the top. Don't, and, you know, don't never think that you can't do nothing. Because my brother always see this in his dream. And look where it brought him. So what are some things that we may not know about your brother growing up? Because he was your younger brother, right? I'm the oldest. He was after me. Right. Yeah. So when did you know your brother made it when um, he was in in the Furious Five? I know. It's not even know when I was when he made it. It's I knew what he he was going to do because when he first picked that mic up with Flash, yes, and he had that crowd jump, 
I already knew what it was. Because I was there with him. From banging on the... My mm-hmm. mother used to tell me, cut banging on my God. Mm-hmm. I knew he was. That was his dream. That was his passion. He never went to school. He was always in the parks. Yes. And I knew that's what his dream so, was. So, like, they, I know they performed at... You know, crazy uh, venues and stuff. What would you know? You were there. Were you at some of the events that he's did? Let me tell you something. I went to parties when I was pregnant with my daughter. In the air with my shout out to your daughter. In that's in the building. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and, 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 and that's Scorpio's daughter. You shout out to Scorpio. Yeah, so you got a legendary daddy. <laughs> So, Come on now. <laughs> so I, I know, I know my brother was gonna be in there. You knew he was gonna be great. Yeah, yeah. My brother was fourteen, fifteen. Just that was his dream, and he dragged me. Not dragged me. He wanted me to be a part of that. As far as entertaining him, banging on the furniture. He even taught me how to do a beat, so he could kick that, spit that, whatever you say it, that rhyme that he wanted to do. So what, what legacy? Um, do you want to carry on in your brother's memory and what do you want everybody to know about your brother well let me tell you something back then was my culture this this culture right now I have to learn it Mm -hmm. I knew back then funky four grandma's the flat that was Mm -hmm. my my history era so right now I just want to learn more and I want to get into more to see Mm -hmm. what I can do on my brother's behalf okay what about, are you going to do like merch? And like you have the shirt on, so are we doing merch? You soon come. You'll see. Soon come? You soon come. I, 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 you'll see. I can't put my business But right now, right look now. at the shirt. I mean, she yeah. got the shirt on. Let's check out the shirt. Yeah. Okay? And my name change. Now I want to say it. And the name change. She bringing it back. So she bringing it back. So, okay, we talking about your brother, but let's talk about you. Like, since you're going to carry on his legacy, what can we expect from you that you can tell us? Well, I live in Atlanta. Mm-hmm. And, and again, I'm, I'm doing research. Okay. I'm doing research. I, I want to go the right way. Mm-hmm. Again, I don't know the right way yet. Okay. But I'm going to go the right way. And once I learn that right way, he going to take off. Okay. And whatever. I don't, I, I, I don't have a clue yet. Okay. But it's in the making. But like I said, what... What can you tell us about the legacy of your brother that you want to leave with us before I tell you, ask you about your social media and stuff? What is one thing about your brother you want the world to know? I'm going to keep him alive. I'm going to keep his pioneer, his legacy alive. Hip hop, he made it. Yes. After this 50 years, who's to say? We need 51, 52, 53. Yes. Salute to the Grandmaster Flash and the yes. Furious Five. Prayers to Creole. Yes. Yeah. It's five yes. mics. You know, See it's crazy. My brother knew Creole. Really? Yes. Salute to Creole. Yes. And, and Salute he, uh, to him. Didn't he celebrate a birthday this week? And his birthday was September 20th. Happy September birthday 20th. to him. So rest in peace. I visit the grave. We all visit the grave and yes. talked, reminisced, kissed him. Yes. Things like that. So where can I reach you on social media? Well, I have to get a her. social media. Well, I, I'm, I'm on I mean, Facebook. Where can they reach I'm you? on Facebook. Don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on Facebook as Janice Wiggins. Okay. okay. So that's where Janice, you guys can find her. Janice Wiggins is G E N I S E. Last name is W I G G I N S. And I'm on Facebook. Well, we okay. appreciate you coming here tonight. No, I thank and you. And celebrating your brother, Cowboy. Like I said, I can relate to you. With the loss of my brother, I I do everything in memory of my brother. So we gonna make sure that legacy lives on for your brother, Cowboy. You already know what it is. It's Coach D and it's Coach Thirty One. That was cute. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you, Lisa. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. So up next, we got Lisa. No, she gonna she gonna oh, sit right Lisa. there. Okay, I'm gonna move. I'm gonna move. You can stay oh. here. No, I, I got something. Oh, you got so much, so. That, my, my schedule is. You needed me. Well, no, okay. I, no, I have my plan. My schedule. Well, I let's get a quick phone picture phone real quick. Can you, you got us? It's on my phone. Are you on live? Oh. <laughs> okay, <laughs> Samuel, you got it. Okay. My schedule. <laughs> Keep talking, cause it's still. Yes, yes, Lisa. Okay. Salute to 
sons and daughter. Yes, of hip hop. But in daughter. my case, it's Hawk brother and sister. Hawk Entertainment is in the building. All right, Lisa, we got you up next right now. Okay. What's so the let us know a little bit about who you are, where you from, and where you started from. Okay. So um, my name is Lisa Ray, uh -huh. and uh, you know that's my name. My middle name is they actually Angel. So people knew me from you know doing the comedy and promoting comedy okay. back in the day. Okay. So some of the people that you see on mainstream um, comedy, like Mike Epps, Tracy Morgan, J.B. Smooth, uh, who else? Um, you name it, they've been to Manhattan proper. Back in the day, we had a spot Rob Manhattan Stapleton, proper. Rob Stapleton. Rob Stapleton, of course. Talent. Talent. Talent was our main host for a number of years. So, you know, we did... Um, Manhattan proper for a good long time. A okay. good long time. We were the longest running comedy club. Two girls from Queens. They used to be spilling out in the streets. So that is essentially where I got my start. But really, I was um, singing... And um, Teddy Riley had produced the first song that my group and my... You just throwing out names like yeah. it's just random people. Like, I mean, you like, you know, Talon and, and then well, Tracy Morgan I mean, and, you know. You know, they, they, they people. But now you know they, I mean? they huge now. Yeah, they are. And I wish I was getting 10%. If I was getting 10%, I'd be huge uh, too. Right now. But, um, none so how do you handle that when you break people in the industry and they blow up and then, like, they forget where they come from? Well, you know what, um... Most of the people that I know, they when they see me, they give me love. Okay. You, you cannot forget me. You okay. can't. You can't because okay. we gave them platforms to do their art when yes. nobody would would put them on the stage. Yes. We put them on the stage. Yes. So that's and also put money in their pocket. Yes. So, but how do you handle the ones that act like they don't remember? Well, you know, I, I just fall back. I'm good. I know who I am. Yes. So because I know who I am, I'm good. You know, and God got me. So yes, he does. That's what it is. All the time. So, let let them know about Angel Hearts. So, Angel's Heart. This Angel's is my, Hearts. My yes. sweatshirt, my logo. Angel's Hearts. My, again, my middle name is Angel. So, Angel's Hearts for Hope Foundation, Inc. is a nonprofit to raise awareness for multiple sclerosis. Okay. In 2016, I was diagnosed with MS. So, when that happened, I was like, what? What is this? So, at the end of the, at the, end of the day... Yes. Um... I was like, I don't know what this is, but I'm going to keep going. So I ended up, I was misdiagnosed at first. I have screws and rods in my back from a misdiagnosis. Wow. And then four years later, I was ultimately diagnosed with MS. So I was like, okay. They were like, oh, you can't work. You can't drive. I'm like, the devil is a liar. I work and I drive. All right. Now, I've written two books since then. I have okay. a book, um, Angel's, Hearts, um, Angel's Heart Guided by Light. And that is a book of inspirational poetry. So... I can spit something too if you want. Let's get it. Let's go. Okay. So this one is going to be, um, this one is called Pause, right? And Pause kind of will speak to what we went through with the pandemic. You know, okay. and that's kind of like how I feel. And maybe some of you feel that way as well. Okay. My life has been put on pause in a sense. To get closer to God, yes, get closer to Him. My days are now longer than my nights. And I'm happy at home. Without a fuss or a fight. Now I spend quality time with him at home. It's truly a blessing having him with me. I'm not alone. I grow in him daily. God builds me up. Providing all my needs and strengthening me with his love. I'm chasing after the heart of God. Pursuing my purpose for his kingdom. Trusting in his Holy Spirit for discernment and wisdom. My faith is in Jesus and continues to increase. While I go through the trial, my God gives me peace. And in these trials, there's joy in my heart while the master's at work perfecting what he started. So trust me, it's good to follow his laws. And I'm happy he's keeping me while my life is on pause. Yes, man. I love that. I love that. So, you know, and I've also am a contributing author to a second book called The Reveal. It's 10 testimonies, 10 powerful testimonies, people overcoming adversity. And my chapter is chapter four, Glamorous Life. Okay. So, you know, um, aside from that, other things that I'm doing, I'm the VP of communication for One World Fest Global. Okay. Which includes Mr. Kamal Ellis. He's the CEO and founder of yes. One World Fest Global. And we have some big stuff going on. We're doing our second annual one um, festival for One World Fest at Jamaica Performing Arts Center. Nice. I think it would be best for him to let you know 
more about that and how this is, um, and who we have, you know, some of our special guests. Okay, let's go. <laughs> how you doing? Good, how are you? All right. What you want me to talk about? The one work first? Talk about, um, talk about it. Yeah, the second annual Tell One World Fest. Tell them who you Fest. are first. Uh, my name is Kamel Ellis. I'm the CEO and co-founder of One World Fest Global. We're a 501c3 nonprofit organization based in Jamaica, New York. Okay. Um, How long you been doing that, young man? Uh, well, we launched the organization in 2017. Okay. Yeah, and so it, it was conceived as a festival, to produce a festival, but coming from a background of community service, we wanted to make sure first that we got on the ground doing the work in the communities that we hope to attract to okay. the festival. Nice. So that's what we did for the first three years, um, getting on the ground, doing the work in the communities. We've done a number of different events and initiatives that basically called for unity because One World Press Global is all about bringing people together of all different races, religions, cultures, and nationalities yes. to celebrate their culture and show appreciation for other people's cultures. Okay, we feel that by doing so, it helps to alleviate some of the fear that divides us as human beings. Okay, and this, and this event that she's talking about, let me know a little bit more about that. Um, when, when is it? It's the, uh, the the second annual One War Fest. It's coming up uh, this October the seventh. That's Saturday, October the seventh, at the Jamaica Performing Arts Center. And there, what we do is try to denote all of those things that show uh, show culture, right? Our formula, we call it the FMLA, or Family Formula, which stands for food, music, language, and art. Okay. With some technology thrown in. So all of those okay. things are signifiers of culture. This year, actually, uh, that F is going to stand for fashion, music, language, and art. With some technology thrown in because we're going to have a couple of fashion lines that are going to be uh, showing us as we celebrate the 50th anniversary of hip-hop as part of what we do there. Okay. Um, but also, we're going to have, like, we've closed off 153rd Street between Jamaica and Archer Avenue. We're going to have a, a hip-hop 50th anniversary block party out there. Okay. we got four DJs coming out there. we got a magician that's going to be out there i got uh pandora's magic box we're going to be doing cotton candy and popcorn and stuff like that for the sure. kids i got a guy that's going to be um some chess tables going to be teaching the kids chess he does chess tournaments for kids nice. um a gentleman's going to be doing a live graffiti art installation mm -hmm. out there that the people could come up and see as, as we nice. do a salute to hip-hop art and um and we got a gentleman that's going to be doing a podcast out there as well. Uh, so that's just on the outside. And then also outside, we got what's called the Diversity Support Yard, where there's going to be uh, organizations and vendors that's going to be giving information from different organizations about what they're about and how, to help, you know, how they help people in different communities, as well as some vendors um, that are going to be outside. That's all outside. When you come inside is where we're going to have the fashion installations from uh, two different lines there. Uh, one of them is Blah, my man Layback. We was just there yesterday. His Grenadian brother right from here in Brooklyn. And we did a real nice interview with Grenadian Television because they had came in and do the Labor Day Parade. Okay. And they wanted to interview him before they head back to Grenada. So we did set that up yesterday with a JPAC. And then we have uh, some panels that are going to be taking place, right? Because the theme of our festival this year is the fight for survival. Okay. Right, last year it was the war on peace, okay. the war on peace, right? Yes, and even though it's a festival and a celebration, it's a festival that's about education and, and information. So, our panels are going to be talking about uh, the war, uh, um, the fight for survival, the fight for those inalienable rights or rights we thought were once inalienable, but now we find them under attack on a regular basis, right? Okay, voting, voting rights. We're doing a, a panel on voting rights. Yes. Um, we're doing a panel on artificial intelligence, AI, right? Yeah. Because then with, with that, you have intellectual property rights that are under attack because yeah. that's partly why the writers are on strike in uh, Hollywood right yes. now because yeah. of the way AI may be infringing and causing a, a, a shift, a, right? A, a shift in the way um, certain things are produced and ideas are conceived. Um, and also human rights in terms of AI, <laughs> that may very well be under attack too if we're not careful. That's why governments are stalling their full rollout of AI because they're not sure yet how it works and how it learns and what it may go on to produce as a result of that learning. Yes. And so um, the, the next panel we're doing is called Mental Health and Mindfulness Panel because due to the pandemic and with the long periods of isolation that a lot yes. of us were under, we came to understand the importance of maintaining our mental and emotional health. Yes. And so we're doing a panel that a, a addresses that. And uh, finally, we're going to do a panel on hip-hop. Nice. Right, and when we talk about hip hop, we talking about freedom of speech, and at the same time, the subtext of the hip hop panel is how do we get here? Meaning, over the fifty years of hip hop, right, from where it started in the park, Grandmaster Flash, the Furious Five, and yes. Grand, was it Theano and all? It was a it was a fun thing. We came out and we had fun, and 
party. Then we've seen it go through different iterations over the years, from gangster rap to to the, you know um, the black consciousness movement, crunk, bass, uh, so forth and so on, to yes. now where we at in this um what do you call the uh, drill era, right? right? Yeah. And so, how do we get here? Right. Right. How do we? How do we? Let's talk about rap, and then where is it going, and who? How many of us as adults feel responsible for where it is now? So. That panel, we're going to have like the storytellers and the people that promoted hip hop and kind of put it out there and ask them, like, how do y'all feel responsible about where it's at right now? So, we're going to be doing those panels, and after that, we're going to do a short, um, a film, short, a short film documentary. Uh, my man Edward Freeman produced a documentary, you're going to do a trailer of his film, and then we're going to go in the final stages, which is going to be the um, Unity Concert Stage. and the okay. Unity Concert Stage, we're going to be a, doing a celebration of the 50 years of hip-hop with a special tribute to the group Houdini. Okay. I kind of group Houdini right from here in Brooklyn. And that's because we use their song, One Love, um, the song One Love, to create yes. our theme song. It's called the One Love, One World theme song. Yes. Right? And Jalil and, and SSC, um, God rest his soul, and, yes. and Grandmaster D had all been very supportive when we do that. As a matter of fact, when Lisa... Um, reached out to Jalil to see if he would license us, get it, let us use the license to the sample. Um, he liked so what we were doing so much um, because we have this group called the International Cipher, where we bring an artist together from. Um, it's called the International Cipher Border Patrol. Right. Mm -hmm. We're bringing artists together from all over the world to make music that knocks down borders and walls. We the new Border Patrol, right? We, nice. we kind of reinventing that whole thing. And when we reached out to them, we, with Lisa and I, and we told uh, Jalil and us see what we were doing with the record, they liked it so much that we were bringing it back into a new international audience that they jumped on the record with us, you know? That's beautiful. And that was more than I could have ever hoped for, you know? Yes, yes. So, you know, unfortunately, SSC passed away during the making of this. Right. And so um, now it becomes a tribute to his legacy. This okay. record is the last project that SSC was on. Okay. You know what I mean? So it becomes a tribute. So we're going to be doing a tribute to them. And we got the International Cypher artists performing, including Lisa. She's on the International Cypher nice. Project representing Puerto Rico. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And uh, we gonna be, that, that show is going to be headlined for the one and only CL Smooth. People yes. I can see yes. cool, so. Well, you know, you, you know, you know, Code Thirty One Media needs to be covering that. Absolutely, absolutely. Okay. We wouldn't have any other. All right. Thing. Absolutely. Yes. You know what I mean? So, so, um, where can they reach you guys on social media? Oh, uh, the Facebook is uh, one, the number one. World Fest Global because it's uh, it's all about one. We got more things alike than we are different. You know what I mean? So it's one world and uh, we all gotta live in it together. That's our concept, right? So we have one World Fest Global on Facebook, the number one World Fest Global Instagram, and as well as um, uh, 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 Instagram, Twitter. Which okay. we ain't really rocking with that X thing right now. Oh, so okay. mostly look for us on social media, okay. on Facebook and Instagram, and the website is oneworldfest.global. Okay. Okay, and. My um, IG is the real underscore Lisa Ray. That's my personal IG. And then you can also find me at Angels Hearts for Hope Foundation on IG and also Facebook. And um, Angel Ray on Facebook, which is my personal. And then also you can please visit my website, which is Angels Hearts for Hope dot org. So that's Angels with the S, Hearts with the S for Hope dot Org. Please visit us, and we're also giving out grants. So if anybody is in need of um, financial assistance because they can't get it through health care insurance or whatever, and you have MS or you know someone that has MS, please send them to my website, and they can um, contact me directly. And then the board, which Kamel is also a part of the board, the board members will reach out and let them know how we can help. So far, we've given out two grants um, to help one woman who needed glasses and um, we were able to give her like $290, which was great. And then nice. the second person, the second person had a surgery and she had to come home to a hospital bed and we were able to award her with $500. So awesome, guys. That we've been able to help people. Yes. Even at this early stage. Yes. So if you know anyone that has MS, send them to the website. Seriously, we got some dollars and we want to help. Guys, if you, if you know anybody that has MS and they need help, Please go to Angel Hearts. Angels. Uh, Angels uh, hearts. For hope. Dot for org. hope. Dot org. Yes. All right, guys. This is the end of our show. It's Coach Dean. It's Code 31. Tune into S Street Media on YouTube. Code 31 Media TV Podcast. Y'all know what it is. We got Queens in the building tonight. 
and we in Brooklyn. We appreciate y'all. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Shut up.